welcome back. I wanted to show you this folder. It was given to me by my nana, um, a lovely Miss Fisher. And initially I thought, oh, there was all these strange envelopes. Um, to obviously to address in Cambridge where she used to live. A street that I've since discovered has long since disappeared under what I believe is probably the Grafton Centre. And then amongst all the papers are these gorgeous transfers. Um, each one would have come in these envelopes. And if I'm very careful with them, they are absolutely stunning. And these would have been used as iron-on transfers to embroider. Now I was lucky also to have inherited some of her the embroideries that she created, some tablecloths. And I'll go and grab the anti macaster see some of this beautiful embroidery in antique shops, charity shops and if you're lucky enough to pick them up then they're beautiful to have. I actually do lay that antimacassar on a chair in my workroom, not because my husband greases his hair um, but because I think it just is pretty. What I've taken to do, because I didn't want to actually lose, use the transfer and then lose the beautiful designs. I mean, these are from the, this is dated 1939. I didn't want to lose them. So I managed to scan them into the computer. And I don't know if you can see, managed to print them off. By doing that on the computer, you can also resize them. You can make them bigger or smaller to fit your thing. But then the problem is, how do I get the design onto the fabric? That's what I'm going to show you, but I thought what I might do is show you beautiful things in here. I mean, absolutely stunning, the lovely books, the lovely designs. And I'm going to, some of them I actually did use recently during the lockdown period. I redecorated this workroom and I'd forgotten they were hidden on a bookcase you can't see normally because it's completely obscured by all my uh, resources. And the designs are really unusual, some of them. Now this was dated 1935 and it's a supplement to the Needlewoman using Clark's anchor threads it says at the bottom. As I say I was lucky enough to inherit these all. So, oh this is one of my favourites, this little Scotty dog. In fact he does appear in one of my embroideries which I'll still show you. I think these, this little chap here, he's gorgeous. I'll show you how I used him. Hang on, let me just find where he is. He's in. There we go. I've used him there. You can see actually in the drawing, he's actually on a set of steps. But I decided to pop him in the garden, surrounded by some flowers that I also managed to find in one of the other pictures. That's, quite, that's what's quite nice about this method that I'm going to show you, is you can actually create your own layouts for things. She's beautiful. Um, she is one I did also do. Let me find her for you in my book. Here she is. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Oh, that's zooming out. If you can see her there. And then... There's the embroidery of her in my book.
oh that's yeah she was definitely one I resized because I think she was quite big and she wouldn't fit my book so I had to make a smaller <clears throat> as I say it's lovely I just love the fact that these envelopes did exist I think even they are let's get back out <coughs> how interesting some of them she's even written some notes on um, in fact there was a piece but she'd almost, I think she was about to start, and I actually did find it and I wrapped it away. Um, put it somewhere safe. So, yes, so all these beautiful, beautiful transfers. And as I say, a lot of them I have actually scanned and put on my computer. But what I say, what is also quite nice is the little books that come with them. Uh -huh. quite like this one here a little bunny and the letter C that's really quite sweet so I'm sure some people have got some of these lying around and I thought like me oh, I want to do the designs but I don't want to damage the designs and I'm going to say I'm going to share with you how I did it so I'll just move them out of the way. <laughs> Okie dokie. Initially, I was holding it up to the window. Um, I was sticking the motif on the window, putting the fabric over the top and sticking it all with masking tape. But unfortunately, the pens I was using, after a while, <laughs> run out. So that didn't work. So then I thought, oh, I need a light box. But at the time when I was doing them and during lockdown, I hadn't got a light box. So what I what I ended up doing initially was I would get two books of a similar height and enough room for my mobile phone to sit in there, believe it or not. And then I got a, a piece of glass out of an old picture frame. And I actually initially, I had covered the edges so as not to scratch myself, covered them with uh, masking tape so as not to hurt myself since it started to peel off. And then using my mobile phone, I would set it to torch mode. And because it's nice and flat, it will go underneath and it doesn't get too hot. When I was a student at college, I used to actually put my old bedside light inside a bin and put a piece of glass over the top. But what used to happen is the bulb would get very hot and therefore so would the glass. So it wasn't a successful successful technique at all and then what I did I got me transfer the, the design I fancied oh I don't know which design to go for I think I might go for this one here I'd get my piece of fabric like that it's just an off cut I've got here handy and then what I would do sorry for the bright light if I place it underneath and I can just make out my design. Now I've got these pens and they are, what are they? They are called, uh, what are they called? They're called phantoms. These ones are called, they're uniball phantoms. You can get these friction ones as well. Um, they're all very similar. They're basically an ink that disappear with heat or with um, friction. Um, I like these phantom ones. I would always suggest you test them on material and iron them to do make sure they do disappear. I have noticed that if you use it on darker materials and you iron them off, it does leave a sort of bleached mark. So be aware of that. And then all I do is just trace off the design. So, as I say, if you haven't got a light box, most people have a mobile phone that has a torch in it that I'm pretty sure uh, we're not in the habit of using. What I will do is take my torch out and just turn that off and show you that I've now lit the light in here. It's not that good today. Um, I can show you that I've managed to trace it off. Um, after struggling 
well I wasn't struggling it worked it was a it was a method that actually did work but it got to the point where my daughter said mum why don't you just borrow my light box so I did so she's got a light box let me just and this light box I was imagining a massive great thing is ultra thin um, and it's got a little socket here that takes a mobile phone plug so what you do is <laughs> you plug it in to your good old fashioned Hang on. mobile phone plug I'm assuming you've got a Samsung or something I'll pop it in there and hey presto it's lit up with tiny 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 little lights and so, once again, oh, this is nice because then you can get a bigger pattern on here. I actually do quite like this. It's actually, it is definitely an improvement to my makeshift method. And then I can chase off, and you can see it's definitely a better, better quality, um, not just a quality light quality feel all round because it means I can actually lean on what I'm doing, I can accurately see what I'm doing and the benefit of this is I'm not destroying the original 1930s pattern. And there we are, I've got a cute little bunny ready for Easter. If I turn that off, oh, hopefully you can see there's the bunny. I hope that's been helpful um, for just transferring your designs onto this material so that you can embroider. What I will do now is actually go, th go through the book that I created. Um, because what I wanted to do is to have something to, to do, slow stitch and to enjoy. And um, having found these patterns when I was redecorating, it was lovely to be able to sit in the garden and embroider these lovely crinoline ladies. Um, the crocheted flowers are ones I use, I've done as well. I've created them. So it's called the Vintage Garden. Um, <clears throat> what I've done is little embroideries, embellished the pages, <coughs> I've um, put buttons on just to decorate, I've added trim, that's trim is from the works, um, I've double backed it, layered it, a bit like you would do in card making or even scrapbooking to give it a frame and I've used pinking, sh pinking shears to cut the edges on these the little tiny bird bath, again more of my crocheted flowers. These are just, um, I've ironed them on to some violin, uh, just regular medium weight dress makers interfacing violin and then I've cut round them and it was a, it was a fabric um, design and I just thought they'd be, make nice under embellishments to the little crocheted flowers. And buttons. That's a little water button. Laser cut images. Laser again. I've used these before. These lovely laser cut wooden embellishments. Really sweet little well, wishing well. I do love the crinoline ladies, especially those that are looking at rose bushes. You don't sort of see rose bushes like that in gardens today, I don't think, I haven't seen one for a very long time. Now these are vintage seed patterns 
that I found on the internet and if you iron your calico onto waxed paper, the American freezer paper, and cut it to size, your printer can, your desk jet printer can possibly feed that in and print. Mine will do it, um, but it will also then leave ink streaks everywhere, so it, it's not keen, but I have had some success. This is the lovely Scotty dog I love. My daughter, bless her, crocheted all these lovely hearts. That's just using crochet cotton. The traditional cottage. And again, the lovely crinoline lady on the bird table. These lovely buttons I bought from Haberdashery shop in Huntingdon. Um, she's still there, I believe. Just not far from where the Waitrose used to be in town <clears throat> and then finished off with one of my favourite flowers the lavender I'm not entirely sure where I got that from but I've included that so I hope you enjoyed that um, at some point I will share with you a bit more about the, the actual back of this this became a project more than I realised I ended up reupholstering two chairs in this fashion and I, so I will talk to you more about that one in a future video but I hope you've enjoyed look through this book and I hope you found this quite useful and um, enjoy bye bye